is the second part of the video tutorial on debugging um, CurveFit. So in the first step we um, were mainly concentrating on making sure that the data we had was the correct data that we were expecting. So we've now got ourselves to a point where we have the correct data. The data we've got is the correct shape, it's not got not numbers in it, and so we can go and have another go at doing the curve fit. So here we go and feed it again at the curve fit, and now it runs and it doesn't crash out, but it produces this warning. Now this is not a good sign. Um, so um, in this particular case it's saying optimize a warning uh, and it couldn't have some problem with the covariance. Um, so let's have a quick look and see what it's actually gone and found in our optimal parameters and the covariance matrix. When we do that we can see it clearly must be wrong. Um, first of all it said the optimal parameters are both one and very nearly one. Um, and then it's come up and said the covariance matrix is infinite. Um, and what that basically means is it's just not managed to fit. It's saying the uh, optimal parameters are 1 plus or minus infinity. Um, in other words, they could be anything at all. So this is no good. It's not worked. So we have to work out what's going wrong. So the first place to go and check to see if there's a problem is to make sure that the function you've got is what you were expecting to be. So let's go and plot the data and then also what we're going to do is plot the results from our function. So this second plot line here I'm plotting the x data and then for my y data I'm just calling my fitting function with the same value of x and I'm just giving it some some parameters that I think might be at least possibly sensible. And when we look at it we go okay now that's clearly not right. Our fitting function is quite definitely wrong. Um, so that would explain why it's not fitting, because it's just simply the wrong function. Okay, so let's go back and have a look again at this. Um, and what we see is that in fact we've made one really glaring mistake, and that is that we've got the wrong power there. It should be a sync squared, not a sync to the fourth function. Okay, so let's try redefining our sync um, squared function with a power 2 this time, and have another shot. Okay, well, it's not going quietly as, as far extreme. If you look at the actual values at the end of the curve there, that was at e to the 21, 10 to the 21, this is now only at 10 to the 10. But it's also quite clearly not right. Um, so there's still a problem here. Okay, so we're going to look at our function. Um, and we see that um, there is one um, uh, potential problem that's gone wrong here. Um, uh, so one of the problems is that um, you have to be really careful when you've got a function that looks like it's a times b divided by c times d, um, that what you're actually doing is that sum. It's very tempting to go and write that just as a times b divided by and then c times d. But if you actually do that, the sum you're doing is a times b all over c, all of that times d. Um, you have to put the brackets in. Um, so it's very easy, it's a bit lost with brackets if you want to write down some complicated physics expression um, into the code. So the other thing it's worth doing is breaking it apart and putting it into little temporary variables and checking each of those temporary variables are doing what you expect. So in this case I had a brackets problem. Um, I hadn't managed to put the, the brackets around the b times x correctly so I ended up multiplying my sine b times x divided by b and then multiplied all of it by x and that was why it went wrong. So let's redefine my function um, and see what happens. Okay so there's my data. Well, My function is now not blowing up. Um, it's not really giving me a peak either but that's probably that my fitting parameters aren't quite right but it's not going completely crazy on me. Okay so um, then we can go and say let's have another shot at this but this time uh, let's go and um, uh, make sure we include some fitting parameters. Now the other thing we might have noticed on the previous definition of the fitting function I had up here is I wasn't making use of the a parameter at all. So that's another fairly obvious sign of a, of a mistake. I have a fitting parameter there that I'm not actually included in the formula of the function. So let's add that in correctly into the formula of the function as a prefactor there. Um, 
down in, in um, this cell and I'm also going to include some sensible values for A and B um, in there. So I do that and now there I've shown it on the plot and you can see that I've got um, at least a peak and it's got some oscillations on it and probably if I've played around with the parameters a bit more I get it to be the right height and the width is not too far off. But there is one problem and that is that by data the peak is offset in X and I haven't included anything to do that in my fitting function. So next lesson, make sure your fitting function has all of the physics that it needs to have in order to represent your data. So in this case we need to be able to add an offset to it. So we can do that by adding a third parameter in this case um, that just moves the data around, shifts it sideways by adding a constant value to the x coordinate. And I can put in some numbers for that and there we have the new set of data um, and you can see that it's um, at least an offset peak and again I could probably optimize around and play a little bit more with the fitting parameters to get it a bit closer. But it's basically now got all the right physics and it's the right function. Okay so that is the end of the second step you need to go through to debug a curve fit, making sure your fitting function is right. So make sure it's got the correct signature. Um, you need to have the first parameter needs to be the x data and then after that you need to have all the um, fitting parameters you used in order to make the function work. Make sure you've got the right number of fitting parameters and make sure that the, um, it gives you a sensible looking curve when you put in sensible values. And the best way of doing that is to actually try plotting the results of evaluating your fitting function with the x data you've been given and what would appear to be physically sensible values for all your fitting parameters. Does it look like it's going to give you the expected fit? Okay, so that's the end of stage two.